computer. Recording is in progress. Hello, everybody. How are you? I got everything straight now, I think. Let's see here. There we go. Now we're all we're all on for a Monday. Okay. Hello. How are you? How's your life? See, my little mustache part is still gone here. Look at that. Look at that. I don't think it's ever going to grow back. I slid on my face. Now, I could cut it down here and make my mustache thinner, and then that wouldn't show up as a problem. And who cares? I'm just old. Let's get used to it, Bennett. You're getting old. Anyway, it's time now for our Monday pop-up, and we're going to start admitting the people that are here already. Uh, and that would be uh, Marjorie's here. She's my current wife. The Paul one and only. Uh, <laughs> Francine Witt. Uh, let's see here. Oh, and uh, Andrew Deutsch and Len LaFrisco. And uh, Jeffrey Stein is trying to sign on. We'll let him keep trying here. Hello, everybody. How are you? A little light today, but oh, well, oh here, here comes some more people. Here comes uh, uh, Charlene Solis. And uh, I'm sure there'll be more coming any minute now. Anyway, how you all doing? Good. Good. How are you? Yeah, yeah. Doing, I'm doing okay. How about you, Len? How you doing? Real good. Yeah, not bad at all. Yeah, we had an old friend of ours come over and say hello because he was in New York. I haven't seen him in years. Who's uh, that? It's um, 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 uh, yeah. Oh, what's his name? <laughs> what's his name? Yeah. Uh, hey, did you did you see Will Durst is doing a show November second here? Yeah, yeah. What is what's yeah? Is that good or bad? Well, I mean, it's 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 good therapy. Let me put it that way. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure. Yeah, I just yeah. Hope it's. I'd love to go see him. I mean, I love that guy. Yeah, I love him too. I think the world of him. I'm glad he's doing it. It's good. It's good to, for him. Yeah, uh, Phil Meyer was here over today. I saw him. Oh, okay. Marjorie has always hated Phil on the on the show. This is on our uh, show on uh, on weekdays. Yeah, uh, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. But how do you feel about him now? He's voting for Trump. So what can I say? Oh, <laughs> stop it! Stop it already. Nice guy, though, isn't he? Uh -oh. Nice guy, isn't what? he? You can't hear me, Marjorie. I can hear you. <laughs> She's choosing not to answer. Oh, come on. He's, he's a really nice guy. Yes, he was a nice guy, but he's still voting for Trump. So what can yeah, I, I know, do? I know, I know. But I don't let that uh, I don't let that tone how I feel about people. I it's yeah. how I respect them, but not how I feel about them. Anyway. Uh, hello to, uh, uh, oh, oh to, what do you know? Our old friend. He's always here. He's always waiting. He's always one of the first people waiting to do the show. And it's, uh, it's uh, Edward Berger. Hi, Edward. <laughs> That's right. And, and, now, next week, I won't, be, I won't be here next week. Why so, won't you be here next week? I'm, I'm going to be out of town. What are you going to be doing? Anything interesting? Uh, I'm just going to the Price is Right. Nothing, nothing really interesting. Are you really? Yeah, there's oh, no, wow. it's no big deal. Anybody can do it. Oh, I know, but I love that show. I yeah. love. Yeah. Wait, you're going to the Price is Right. Yeah. You're flying out to California. Yeah. You're going to get get in a line for a studio audience, but you right. got, do you have tickets? Yeah. yeah, of course I have tickets. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and. Make, uh, make Make sure they hear your voice in the waiting line. Yeah. They will pick you. Yeah. I've, been, I've been going there for years. Really? Yeah, wow. I've been going since '82. Gee, you're more interesting than I thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not really interesting. I mean, you ever been uh, picked? Can you tell us what the trip <laughs> price not, is? Not, not, the, uh, not on the real show. It's on one of the stage shows they have. So okay. Well, and what's the cost of the trip? So we want to see if you know how to guess the price. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what do you mean you were on one of their stage shows? They have little stage shows, and they, you know they have the replica games, but the prices are like real small, you know. Uh, so, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, but you, but you, you've never been picked from the uh, not not the real one. No, they never said come on down. Right, right, right. 
but you need to tell us the air dates, right? I'll, yeah, I'll tell you. I'll tell you when to look. Okay. Right. And what is your T-shirt gonna say? Oh, I buy, I buy, I buy from them. I have one for uh, cliffhangers, and one, and one says, uh, "This is a winner." <laughs> this, one, uh, this is what a winner looks like. I think that's what it says. <laughs> Oh wow! I wonder if we, what if we could come up with a great. If, well, you're very good at t-shirts, Charlie. Yeah. Oh what yeah. Your t-shirt on the Price is Right you. say. Figuring things out is better than making. Fuck. <laughs> Wait a minute, science. Science. Because figuring uh, things out is better than making stuff up. Oh, good. Yeah. 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 Nice. <laughs> That's terrific. Uh, but anyway, so oh, so uh, you're going to be going to the Price is Right, fine. Right. Yeah, I I have to admit it. It's one of my guilty pleasures. What I do yes. when Marjorie isn't looking is I watch the final part of the game. Yeah, I love that part. Yeah, because <laughs> mm-hmm. all that other stuff is just a bunch of idiots. Okay, Did you see the guy. <laughs> the guy was off. By- when you get to the end, that's a game you at home can play. Yeah, you know. There was a guy that was off by a dollar last week, was it? Did you really? see yeah. One dollar. <clears throat> One dollar higher or lower? He was under by a dollar. He won both showcases. He won it. Yeah. Yeah. And doesn't he win both because he does? Yeah. Both? Yeah. yeah. He did. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Marjorie, look at Marjorie. She's looking at me. You watch the prices, right? <laughs> <Every day. laughs> you know, I look at the clock and I see, oh, five, 10 minutes of it. Oh, they're going in the final, uh, final thing. They're fine. Okay. But most, most of the people on that show, and I'm not putting you down, are, are not exactly the highest quality human beings. No, I know <laughs> that. Did you see the guy last week that was bidding on? I think a couple of vacations or whatever, he bid eighty thousand dollars. Oh yeah, I saw that one. <laughs> and then of course the other guy bid a dollar because yeah. it's like there's no you knew you you knew he was over. Yeah. Now so 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 you're going there and uh do you always go there with the anticipation of perhaps being chosen? Well, kinda. I mean, don't they see you every year and go, oh, listen, let's give that guy a chance here. <laughs> he never comes back again. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Wow. How long did it how long did it take from when you wrote in to when you got the tickets? Oh, you don't have to write in anything. Just go, go on the computer and uh Well, that's what I mean. How long did it take? Just a few days. Nothing. Or? You just you just uh, put you in the, just ask for a ticket and you you print so, it out. How, how far yeah. in advance did you do it? I think is what I think he, that's what I'm uh, saying. You know, you know, you can just uh you know, whatever. Just you, you just find your date, and you just uh, they put they come out about a month in advance. So you know. Okay. Yeah, but now they do five shows a day. Well, no, they do uh, three shows a day now. Three shows a day. Okay, it's yeah. an hour show. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. They do three hours, three shows a day. So yeah. do you get to go in for all three shows when you go there? Well, if there's room for the second show, they'll let you go into the second show, but they won't let you do like three shows in a day. So, okay, you know. you've got to leave and go home. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, Ed, Edward, you should get Alex to make a call for you. You know, he used to be a big shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe he can fix it for you. I yeah. know a guy who's kind of good at that sort of thing. Uh, uh-huh. there in New York. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm teaching people how to launder money. What you do is you pick a really low-priced product, like $5, and you sell it for 100000 and then people in Saudi Arabia and Iran and otherwise can buy those products. And then you might, you know, give them a favor or something. You know? hmm. Yeah. I'm thinking watches, coins. I'm not sure what. Maybe shoes, tennis shoes. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, teach- I'm teaching the class. So, you know, so if you send me $1,000, I'll give you all the details. Hello to Andrew Deutsch. We should say hello to him. <laughs> yeah. He's next in line here. And then Paul Eleven, who wouldn't be caught dead going to the prices, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but I, I thought I, you didn't. You didn't see. I thought you didn't love me anymore. I mean, you know. What? <laughs> I said I thought you didn't love me anymore because you <laughs> you didn't say hello. Well, I was <laughs> getting around to you. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm getting that. around to Francine next. Hello, Francine. Hi. And I. Maybe- I- I would actually go to the Wheel of Fortune myself. Uh, that would be uh, Wheel of Fortune. That's the one. But Pat's not on it anymore, so it's not quite the same thing. But well, the show I would like that show. To, 
the show I would like to do, my favorite is Jeopardy. Yeah. But yeah. but I could never play Jeopardy. My my yeah. hands freeze in trying to hit that button, you know. Plus, there's something about that game that bothers me, and that is, yes, you have to have the intelligence to play it, but you also have to be able to press that button faster mm -hmm. than the next guy. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of unfair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? In can I tell you my Jeopardy story, Alex? No, you didn't tell me your Jeopardy story. Well, but may I? I may now. I? So <laughs> when I was when I was doing my undergrad, the town I lived in picked up television from two different cities, major cities. Yeah. And Jeopardy was on at different times. Mm -hmm. so I would watch. I would watch the show and remember all the answers, and then head over to the fraternity house, and oh. and oh. I was so famous. They were trying to get me to try out for Jeopardy. Could not understand to this day. None of them ever caught me. I did. I did you one better than that. I Please. had a girlfriend who had a satellite dish in the old days. Oh, there you go. You could sit shit. there with the satellite dish and watch them sending down all five shows for the week. Oh, <laughs> we would sit there and watch them, and then I go back to San Francisco and I invite friends over about time Jeopardy was on, and I knew all the answers, and they thought that's they'd awesome. Be like, oh man, you're brainy, and I'm going, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really. Right. Smart. You know what I do to Marjorie? I go online here. I download an illegal version of the John Oliver show. And at the beginning <laughs> of the John Oliver show, every week they have a different visual just before he the show goes on of uh, somebody like this week. It was um, it was Dame Maggie Smith. Okay. But we every week go like, who do you think it's going to be? Who do you think it's going to be? <laughs> no. And so what mm -hmm. I do now is I download this thing. I watch the first minute or so. I mm -hmm. find out, and then I sit there and go, I bet it's, didn't, didn't I tell you that today? Yes. Game <laughs> Maggie's game. And she has such a bad memory. She never remembers that I do this to her. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, where did I leave off? Oh, yes, Francine. How are you doing, Francine? Good? Oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, Thanks. I'm okay. Uh, there's uh, there's Lynn LaFrisco. Hello. You know, the uh, the um, thing with uh, Wilders. I I might yeah I I might it's in San Francisco that's kind of a a trap. Well, people here who uh, don't know Will Durst is a comedian who also happens to be a friend of mine. Who about four years ago? At least yeah I think it's maybe had more a than broke. Yeah. Which is not good for a stand-up comic, you know. No, I didn't think he was getting off the couch. Yeah, uh, but uh, he has not done, he, he's been doing some stand-up. He has done some elsewhere. Okay. And he's doing a show on election night, I believe. Yeah. 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 And it's kind of a comeback for him. I don't, you know, I, I... Don't know how far along and how well he is at this point. I haven't talked to him lately, and I really yeah. Do. You used to have him on every once in a while. Yeah, yeah I got to talk to him. I, I every now and then I'm sitting here at the computer and I go to try to call him, yeah. and he either Reach doesn't answer or I get something like, "Oh, I got something else I'm doing. I got to can't talk to you right now." And I'm going, "You're lying in a bed in a in a in a <laughs> what do you call it? Home? Uh, nursing home? Uh, nursing, nursing home?" home. And uh, you uh, you can't talk to me, you know. But anyway, mm -hmm. so, I mean, I'm happy that he's going to be doing a show, and I think it's wonderful. Uh, I don't know. I, I It's going to be interesting to see what his chops are, because, you know, a lot of what you do with comedy is timing, and timing is something you can lose with a stroke. Yeah. You talk to him, and he, he doesn't exactly have the timing. But I hope maybe all that has gotten better. And if nothing more, this will be good therapy for him. So, well, you know, I mean, he does a lot of political observation stuff, which doesn't necessarily need timing. But, you know, it we'll see. does. I mean, comedy, period. Getting up on a stage and then telling people stuff dem demands timing. It really yeah. does. Didn't, didn't, uh, me, didn't, what's the most important thing about doing comedy? I said it's timing. Yeah, did. <laughs> didn't Louis C.K. screw up his career with a stroke too? Who? Uh, <laughs> did, 
a little different kind of stroke. Well, was it two? Was it two? Ben? It was from, no, he didn't jerk off in front of those women. <laughs> no, he didn't. But did he? Did he, Marjorie? He asked them. If oh, I'm did. sorry. I was. I meant Tubin. He uh, no. Uh, <laughs> no, he just wanted to whip it out. He didn't. Yeah. Oh, do you mind if I whip out my penis? Yeah. And none of them said no, so he pulled no, it he out. Did. They they had a chance to say no or leave or whatever. I feel Louis C.K. is a real gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Good. I'm good, but I would not be watching these shows. <laughs> you would not be what? Watching any of these shows that you're talking about. Game shows? Uh, yes. Oh, you mean game shows? Why not? Game shows are fun. It's just, fine. You know, whatever. You know. But I think my favorite game show has always been Jeopardy. You know, yeah. being smart. It's really smart. You can't be a dummy to play Jeopardy. I miss Alex Trebek, too. Yeah, Ken Jennings yeah. just doesn't... Yeah, once yeah. he died, it kind of lost its... What, it, yeah, it, I it what I loved about Alex Trebek, who hosted the show Jeopardy. Oh, by the way, in case nobody knows about who Will Durst is, he is a stand-up comic. I think I told you. Um, um, no, but uh, what were we saying? Um uh, that uh, we miss Alex Trebek. <laughs> yeah, Alex Trebek was a great host for that show. But uh, I didn't like when somebody answered it wrong, the way <laughs> he kind of said you're wrong. Yeah. Kind of was like, oh, I'm so sorry, but you're stupid and you <laughs> got it wrong. <laughs> yeah. <You know? Nice. laughs> I'm so sorry. I think he used to say that. No, mm -hmm. wrong answer. Mm -hmm. but then you have to put it in the form of a question. If you don't put it in the form of a question, yeah. you know. Uh, anyway, uh, Charlene, hello. How are you? I, I'm good, and I like Jeopardy too. You like Jeopardy too? See, you like Jeopardy, and 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 Francine, you said you liked what? I like Wheel of Fortune. Wheel, but of I like I like Jeopardy also. I like them. I like. I, I started watching Wheel of Fortune because it came on after Jeopardy, and it just kind of... Yeah. Well, they're both of the same company, so they come yeah. after each other. Yeah. In right. some well, way. Merv Griffin. What? Yeah. It's, it's Merv Griffin came up with both of those shows. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, I think his wife actually came up with Jeopardy. Yeah. Mm. She said, I think they were driving somewhere, and she said to Merv, Hey, how come you never screw me anymore? Are you gay? No. <laughs> <laughs> they were driving down the road. And she said, you know, you got all these, these game shows where people are asked questions and they have to answer them. Why don't you have them have to answer in the form of a question and give them the answer? And uh, that's how it was born. And huh. it, it, I think my favorite game show, because it's intelligent, it's not stupid. There's nothing stupid about it. Uh, there's everything, I had to say this, I know you like it, Francine, but there's everything stupid about Wheel of Fortune. Right, I just, I like the last, the last puzzle, you know, mm -hmm. like I always feel. And I, and I always feel like, you know, when the wheel spins and it's going to a stop on lose a turn I, like everybody you just naturally go no and that's how i <laughs> no i've lost it <laughs> i took I the NBC, yeah i took the nbc studio tour back in the 80s i think um in burbank and they had the wheel sitting there and so the tour is moving through and i'm kind of laying in the back and i'm looking around going yeah whatever i gave that wheel a spin <laughs> Really? For you. <laughs> and, and I could hear the 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 guy up front going, "Hey, whoever's back there, come on, move up here. Let's go. Come on." <laughs> it was flat. I think I right? The wheels. I I yeah, yeah. It's very big, though. It's big and it's very right. heavy. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. And it looks terrible when the lights aren't on or whatever. I mean, it looks it looks shoddy, like somebody beat it up. <laughs> well, it is. It is absolutely uh, actually a prop. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. I want to play Wheel of Misfortune. That'd be more fun. Yeah. Right. Then vote for Trump. No, yeah. thank you. Uh, hello, Charlie. How you doing? Hi. Doing pretty good. I'm a little sad this morning. A little sad this oh. morning? Why? Well, because one of my favorite singers died, Chris Christopherson. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 
And the and the Cowboys lost too, huh? No, the Cowboys won. Oh, did the they? Oh, good. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> also, you have something you can be happy about too. I, but Chris Christopherson was eighty-eight. You can't feel sorry. Yeah, but he was a big force in my life in the seventies when I was in college. Wow. I mean, Why you? you know, his lyric was that what it was? Was what what it was? You liked his lyrics. His lyrics were fantastic. They were. Yeah. Well, he wrote at least a couple of great songs that to this me day. Me and Bobby McGee, that was him. Yeah, me and Bobby McGee is a great song. Yeah. Um, and hello to the woman who is typing her ass off. <laughs> her resume. <laughs> and, yeah, her resume. So she can get a job where she'll allow her to just not have to be worked during the hours of, you know. This show is on. Now, come on. I guess everybody here is independently wealthy. And then, <laughs> you know, you've already done your careers. When I was working, I locked out an hour on my schedule every Monday. Screw them. I'm in that, a meeting. The owner of this company has walked in many times uh, that, oh, you know, he's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no. I appreciate your participation. There's no question about that. I mean, they, they like, no. They don't you're care. the Darla of our gang here. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, and uh, finally, there was, of course, is Mike Chisholm, ladies and gentlemen. One dollar, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> and not for nothing, but my favorite game show is a more modern one, Win Ben Stein's Money. Oh, yeah. so I figured geez. it'd be the dollar and nine beauty contest. <laughs> oh, no. oh my god i love that show when I was yeah. <laughs> all the 98 beauty contest mm -hmm. wow. yeah yeah that was a chuck Berry show yeah, and, after mm -hmm. the gong show so, didn't it come on like after the gong show i feel like it did yeah, yeah. it might have because the gong show was also chuck Berry's. Mm -hmm. That, that was Rip that was, was it Rip Taylor? Was yeah, that his yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. created some mm -hmm. of the greatest shows in game show history because it were game shows that I know were invented by them sitting around the Chuck <laughs> Berry office saying, What kind of show can we come up with next that will just absolutely make everybody mad? I wonder <laughs> how much cocaine they were doing when they were yeah. figuring yeah. out. I mean, that's, totally. Those shows were figured out on drugs. The dollar ninety-eight beauty contest. <laughs> he died before he could do the win Jerry Springer's money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh I yeah, I interviewed him once. I liked him. The good guy. Good guy. Yeah, yeah. Well he he wrote one of the greatest books of all time. Uh, a biography that uh, was called uh, what was a mind of uh, what was it? Um, oh boy, it's not confessions of a serial killer. Yeah, no confessions of a that was your book, Mike. Movie out yeah, of, that's right. George Clooney directed it. Uh, confessions of a, a dangerous mind. Dangerous, dangerous mind. mind. Yeah. Good. Thank you. I've lost my mind. I can't remember anything. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, and it, it, what he did is he wrote this book. It was a biography of his life. You know, like everybody writes a biography, except everything in this book was absolutely true in the way his life went and the women in his life and so on and so forth. There was just one little detail that wasn't true. And that was that he was hired by the CIA to be a contract killer. <laughs> And that's yeah. the reason he invented the data <clears throat> is so he could take people on trips to foreign countries and be the, uh, uh, the uh, what do they call this? Chaperone. Chaperone. The chaperone. And while they were out on their dates, he would go out killing people for the CIA. Yeah. And, I, and I know it's not true because I never saw him at the meetings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I say that out loud? Mm -hmm. Alex, in, in the interview I did, I never asked him if it was true or not. Because everybody who ever interviewed him about that book said, oh, come on, is it true? Mm -hmm. Go along with the joke for crying out loud. <laughs> Play yeah. into it. it. Except that he was a contract killer and interview him as a contract killer. Have fun with it. He had fun with it. But it was a good book. It was a great book. You know? And I thought, I thought he was brilliant. I thought he invented some brilliant game shows all of which were in totally bad taste i mean what's in more bad taste 
than the than the dating game. Yeah. <laughs> you, got, you know, three guys <laughs> telling lies to a woman and hoping they'll get a date with her. You know, and then they ask, you know silly question. You know, uh, sounds like Tinder. <laughs> If I were an elephant, how would you play with my trunk? You know, things like that. <laughs> right. uh, and I just, I thought he was brilliant. I just thought he was brilliant. Didn't they have a serial killer on the What? I'm sorry. Go ahead, man. I was just going to say, can I, I want to tell you my favorite one. I don't know if anybody remembers this one. And you can watch it if you're just watching like t TV on the antenna, you know, the free TV, the match <laughs> game. <laughs> oh. Those man. were fun. They were drunk on those shows every oh, night. All the time. He was like, yes. Hey, did I, you I, see? I, yeah, the, the dating, uh, the match game, I like pretty well, oddly enough. Yeah. Remember the Liars Club? The Liars yeah. Club. They had, they would show some product and they, they would all say what it was. Yeah. And one of them was telling the truth. Yeah. Okay. And it was the, that was, that was super popular for about a week. <laughs> I, I just by the way i just bought diddy's new album it's a, a thousand bottles of lube on the wall i don't know if you <laughs> if you've heard it what why why would he buy a thousand bottles of lube even if you're gonna have even if you're gonna have three thousand orgies <laughs> you're not gonna use up a thousand bottles of lube this is a family show alex you should bring that up <laughs> clearly he's a prepper yeah, yeah. yeah. Thousand bottles of blue on the wall. A thousand <laughs> blue. If one of them I will should accidentally fall, nine bottles. That, yeah. So anyway, you're welcome. Yeah. And then we got our mayor here in New York City. Speaking of, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he might be saying he might be sharing a jail cell any minute now with Diddy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but uh, our mayor, uh, how do you feel about that one, uh, Francine? She's oh, he should he should get out. He should just step down. Yeah, he should. He's yeah. not. He's not. <laughs> He's not defense? going to. But but I always feel like if Cuomo had to go, he should go. Yeah, because I I liked I liked Cuomo. Well, you get Cuomo's already defense. saying he'll run for mayor. You'll get his a vote for him, and he's running for mayor. <laughs> Well, his yeah. defense is that um, Americans love turkey on Thanksgiving. Why can't he? Oh. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. No, boy. Mm. Yeah, we got a mayor it's, that's been ripping us off here and letting people build unsafe hotels and so on because right. they're by Turks. And you're making fun of it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Gleefully. Gleefully. Go ahead. I don't <laughs> mind. Uh, kind of takes the heat off of Rudy Giuliani a little bit. <laughs> oh, he's not like the worst one now. No, they have the mayor's yeah, suite at yeah, Rikers. He say he's not the worst mayor anymore. Don't they have yeah. a mayor's suite at Rikers that can hang out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're right. You're right. But uh, anyway, so. Uh, boy, she's a good typer, isn't she? I, I can't type that well. Uh. Hmm. Did you study typing in school? Oh yes. Who didn't yeah. take typing class? Yeah. I, I we would always typing. start our typewriters and then she would go, begin. And it would just be deafening because everybody's like, Kh. Yeah, because they were all the mechanical typewriter. Yeah. yeah they're right, right, back. right. I had a staunch tablet, but that's <laughs> but this is my I, I've been hunting peck all my life, but I used to be able to do pretty well. Now I'm not, I'm slower as I've gotten older. You mm -hmm. hunt peck too, don't you, Marjorie? Yeah, because <laughs> typing was only given to people that were going to become secretaries. If you're no. going to college, they didn't yeah. teach you typing. No, that it was just. Right. Well, I was in high school. It was just an elective. You know, yeah. Yeah. Didn't have that choice. Fun. You know, it was kind of a fun elective. Everybody just. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, Marjorie, that I mentioned Hunt and Peck. I know you probably thought I was talking about sex. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. it's um, <laughs> So how's life in Canada? Uh, I've had a I've had a really great day so far <laughs> it's been it's been beautiful outside i had a really really great meeting uh hung out with my granddaughter for a while it's been a great day been a great day it wow. has 
How's it been here, Mark? It was been pretty nice. It's been a great day in old, New York. Old friend coming over and so on. You know, it's, it was nice. It's uh, going to be ridiculously hot here this week, like 105. I, so really, yeah. Well, our temperature is going down. We're like what 73 right now. Mm. Well, somebody's playing Jumanji in Georgia. That's all I know. <laughs> What do you mean they're playing Jumanji? In <laughs> because you had the hurricane stuff, like you know, on Friday, Saturday, our half our state don't have their underwater, don't have power. Um, but there was a bio lab explosion, like oh, south of the city, in a town called Conyers, and there's just been a whole cloud of chemical over our city. Oh, oh God! Cool. Clear right now. They're telling us not to leave. You know, don't go outside. If you have to go outside, take you know, don't turn your air conditioning off and all that stuff. Now mm. you're you're in in Atlanta, basically, right? Atlanta, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So and you got a lot of the brunt of the storm down there. Well, I personally didn't, but I was scared to death. They made it sound like, oh, this is going to be unprecedented. You're gonna, but it it shifted so <laughs> to the city, Augusta. Get Marjorie Taylor Green. That's all I. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it, it tore up Asheville up in Carolina. It was, like yeah, east, Carolina. it was like the east part of Georgia, like Savannah, Augusta, mm -hmm. South Carolina, and then it shifted. So then western North Carolina, like the mountains, Asheville is completely devastated, mm -hmm. which breaks my heart. I love Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah. Western North Carolina, the mountains, who would think they're going to get devastated by oh. pain? Who do you think flooding right. in the mountains? Jeez. I know. Landslides. Landslides there and mudslides. Yeah. It was it was a hemicane. <laughs> no, but it sounds terrible. Yeah, sounds it had, had balls. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm just kind of over the, you know, stuff. Yeah. On it. Isn't it amazing that after you get a storm like that, how wonderful the weather is? Mm -hmm. I mean, when we had the earthquake in San Francisco, and I don't know if Len was close enough to it. To oh be, yeah. To be able to agree or disagree with this. The next day was one of the most beautiful days I've seen in San Francisco. I mean, yeah. just glorious. The sun was shining. The birds were singing. All of that. I mean, it just that, it was that a time of year which is coming up in the next week. Here, this this time of year is the best time. That's what I'm saying. It's gonna be hundred degrees here and sunny and just beautiful. Yeah. Well, and it's it's like when we had the thing on Friday. We had the most rain in the history of Atlanta in, the, in a 48 hour period. We said, wow. And, and it was like so, it was just so yucky and dark, you know, in the morning. Everybody made their way in. And then at three o'clock, it was gorgeous. It was like sunny, yeah. clear skies, like low humidity. You, know, you never thought it was the same day because it was just dark as night, pouring down rain when we came into work at three o'clock. It was great. Wow. Mm. Crazy. I can't yeah. believe they made you come into work. <laughs> yeah. Well, people work from home. I just don't work from home, so I came in. You know, yeah. You, yeah. Know, you know, a lot of rain. Some trees were down, so I had to go some other ways. But Were there yeah. people you work with, though, that maybe perhaps lived places where the hurricane was hitting hard? Yeah, I mean, we have some off. We have an office in Augusta, and they're, they're just shut down. We have one in Aiken, South Carolina. They're shut down. We have one in Hendersonville, North Carolina, which is western North Carolina. It's shut down. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're just a lot of those people are working from home or they can't even work because they don't have electricity themselves. So. Yeah. I yeah. heard on the news that they don't, they don't have electricity. They don't have water. Right. They were talking about Asheville is going to there. It's really devastated because of the water situation. They may not have water for weeks. I'm like, oh, God. Wow. Wow. So terrible. I mean, it's really terrible. No, well, they should get in the car and go somewhere else for a while. You yeah. Know? I mean, uh, um, I've seen some of the devastation, and I wish, you know, I hate Florida. You know how I hate Florida. Mm -hmm. Anybody <laughs> notice I've hated Florida over the years? Mm -hmm. Yes. We yeah, agree. So when it gets devastated like that, I go, good. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at some of the devastation this time, and I couldn't gloat at it. You know, mm -hmm. it was really terrible. Yeah. I haven't heard DeSantis say a word. Is he even around? I haven't said, heard anything. Oh, no. Santis has been, he's been on the case quite uh, a bit. I haven't heard a thing oh, out no. here. No, I, Ugh. as much as I hate him, he's, he's been the governor. He's got to be when that kind of thing happens. 
And he mm. was pissed because he didn't have that Sharpie to move with the storm. But <laughs> right, right. Well, Trump is going down to visit the storm areas. Uh, but yeah. first, he's got to stop off at uh, the uh, Mini Mart uh, to pick up towels. Well, he, he, wait, he waited a few days because it was so stormy. He didn't want to get caught with her again. Yes. <laughs> I mean, he was at the Georgia Alabama game, which Mackenzie, my daughter's Mackenzie, went to Georgia. She's in New York, of course. Her boyfriend was in Atlanta. His sister goes to Alabama. He went to Georgia, say so they drove over or he drove over, went to the game. But she was telling me yesterday that he had to get to the game or get to the stadium by 430 even though the game started at like 8.45 or some crazy time, they had to get there at 4.30 because Trump was there. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it was like TSA-level security, yeah. you know, going in. It was like a nightmare. But Did they, it, did they fly the banner? I was like, oh, they're all here for me. No. They're, <laughs> they're here for he, the football game, you idiot. Yeah. He, he had some rally with just a couple thousand people. He told this lie that the – because he doesn't have enough Secret Service, he couldn't let the 50,000 people in that were outside. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, a lot of the people at the at the stadium it was in Tuscaloosa, they were booing. There was people booing him and giving the finger. Yeah, I was showing people. I saw pictures of people giving him the finger. Yeah. Wow. The, 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 middle, the middle one? Yeah. <laughs> Kamala Harris was supposed to fly a plane over with a banner or something. Well, why, Did you do that? Oh, I don't know. Answer me yeah. this question. Why do we pick this finger? Because <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a cock and balls. Really? Is that <laughs> the reason? Why? I think. Oh, okay. I it's just the learned, longest finger, too, usually. I just people. learned when I was younger how to give the finger, and then I did it. And, and uh, I the just. the longest one. It'll go deeper. Oh, wow. <laughs> I need to hear that. Yes. <laughs> Sit on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, and I, I and Len is exactly right. Len is exactly right. As soon as he said that, I'm like, oh, that makes so much sense. Uh, the middle finger uh, salute originated as a phallic gesture. The Greek playwright uh, Aristos. Aristophanes. 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 Yeah. Aristophanes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Like the spell. The people That's like this spell. Okay. Was also purportedly a fan of the gesture referring to the long finger in center, several of his plays. In his comedy, The Clouds, written in 419 BC, a caricature <laughs> of Socrates attempts to instruct, instruct the debtor uh, about the poetic meter. I don't know. So thank you, you so much. So, thank you ago. so much for that, that contribution. <laughs> best ever. Paula, that was the best ever. I will remember I will remember that forever. How you just rolled that right off your head. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to pronounce that? What's wrong with you? <laughs> My man, Aristophanes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, he's from Canada, you know. Yeah, he pronounced it correct in Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Uh so what else has been happening? We lost Dame Judy, uh Jamie, no, Dame uh, yeah. Maggie Smith. Maggie Smith. Miss Christopherson. Yeah, they were she was what? She was 89. Yeah. He was 88. I'm 84. Oh my god. You're almost 85. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> You know, doesn't that doesn't that freak you out, Alex? It's 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 starting to freak me out. You know, like reading obituaries is very unsettling. Oh well, I, yeah. on Sunday and on CBS Sunday morning they do the obituaries and who yeah. died and how old they were, and I'm going, wow. <laughs> you know, I got two more years. I got three more years. I got five. Yeah. <laughs> you know, at this point, you don't know. But of then course. again, the question was. Did you ever know at any time in your life? You know, I mean, I, I could have been 30 and been in a car crash and that was, yeah. it, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, it's only that I am in a period of my life where I can die of something. And, and chances are I probably will, but who knows what, you know. Um, but it's just, you know, it's just not it's not the same as saying, oh, well, maybe I could die in a car crash. You know, I mean, I've yeah. had a lot of friends who are dead who didn't, 
you know, they died young. I mean, my friend's yeah. nephew was 67. Yeah. Uh, known some comedians like, uh, you know, Robert Schimmel, who I think was maybe in his 60s when he died. And he died. His car is, is he he had cancer. He had one cancer after another. I, mm -hmm. I, I think maybe he yeah. had five different breeds of cancer. And what did he die of? His daughter drove the car into a tree. Oh, yeah. Okay, you know, so you never know. You just never know. I'm I'm planning on living forever. So far, the plan's working. <laughs> I, you know, I mean, I, uh, I, I, I mean, I'm not as well as I was. I don't walk as well as I would did, and blah, blah blah blah, and things like that. But I don't have anything. Do I have anything really bad, Marjorie, except for the leukemia, which is a leukemia that is sur completely survivable? You're not walking. Well, I'm not walking because I've got... Oh, just give, leave me alone. I'm, you know what? Do I have anything that's going to kill me? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, me. Marjorie. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you. on Tuesday. Thank you. <laughs> It'll be a surprise, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> and my right. mother's ninety-seven. You know what? You could, you might do okay. You She's ninety-seven. Yeah. Wow. Well, my my yeah. father, my mother lived to be a hundred years plus. Right. Right. Yeah. right. So I mean, I know what it's like to have people who live to be that old. So maybe you got the genes in you. You know, yeah. you know something though. I mean, I I don't know. I mean, at that age, you do you really know anymore that you're not? Yeah, my mother was kind of out of it. You know, uh, I know somebody week. who's a hundred and seven. Oh, and she's wow. she still communicates pretty well. Wow. Uh, she obviously can't walk very much anymore. Uh, but she's a, she's a brilliant person, you know, uh, in, the, in the fact that she's always been a smart person mm. who, who knew what was going on. Well, you see, at this point in my life, I could die tomorrow, but I also could live forever. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it sounds like, it I mean, sounds like the Rodney Dangerfield what, joker, he says. Well, no, what? 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 What you want? Okay. Finish John. your thought. I'll tell you. No, about. Rodney Dangerfield joke. Go ahead. Yeah, no. There's old joke. He says, "I'm, I'm, so, I'm at the age where I could go tomorrow. I hope I go tomorrow because I haven't gone today yet." <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing Sorry. is well, that, that 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 you think about it, and and the choices, the choice is also getting terribly old. And yeah. Then, you know, becoming Joe Biden. You know, I mean, yeah. hell, I mean, Joe Biden's old, younger than I am. Hmm. It, yeah. Yeah. At some point, it's a quality of life issue. Yeah. It is a quality of life issue. You know, and and I mean, yeah, that Dame Dame Maggie Smith lived is so far. She's what? How old? How old was she when she died? Eighty nine, I believe. Eighty nine, something yeah. like. that. And the question is, how was her quality of life? You know, so I don't know. You know, it's strange. It, I, I'm going to do this. I never do this. Isn't it Edward Berger? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> See, you should be a buzzer on a game show. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, let me see here. Uh, uh, so, uh, um, Mike, how how's everything up? Everything's fine up there with you. Everything is great up here. Yes, You're having a great day today. I am having a great day. I just uh, I just had a meeting with Worldwide Pants, which is David Letterman's company. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was pretty cool. Just that alone, being able to say that sentence is like a little <laughs> check off the bucket list. And guess what? There might be some stuff coming coming down the pipe as a result of that meeting. So that's even better. So good. it was it was very very good. Yeah, yeah. I'm feeling yeah. great. Yeah, good, 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 good. Um, and uh, because you know Mike does his podcasts, his uh, little yes, my little Letterman podcast thing. But I was thinking about David Letterman the other day, and I was thinking it in reference to you. Um, and my question is, are we slowly getting to that period of time where there are people who don't really know who David Letterman is? Yeah, I ask it all the time when I talk to people. Um, I was just on a, um, 
we have a local cable access late night show here in Kelowna and I was just a guest on it. And I went around talking to people beforehand and they're like, oh, hey, what are you doing? So you're a guest on the show. What do you do? And this is the way that I answer the question now. Um, I was there because of it wasn't because of, you know, what I do for my day job. It was I was there because of the Letterman podcast. And I say to people, do you know who David Letterman is? And, you know, most of the time I get, well, of course, like, are you stupid? Of course, I know who he is. Mm -hmm. But coming up more and more and more is the answer of, yeah, I know the name. Who, who, who is that? And I say, do you know who, like, Jimmy Fallon, Stephen Colbert are? Oh, oh, yeah, he's the late night guy. Like, I get that a lot more and more and more talking to, like, millennials and back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it gets worse. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Dude. I mean, there, there are uh, you can find people today uh, in their forties. Yep, who don't know who the Beatles were. Yeah, you know? you know, I mean, what it is if you are not doing what you're doing regularly, you just disappear off the map, off the mental map. You know? Right. I mean, and Dave, Dave still is to his credit. Like, there's a lot of people who are like, "Oh, I saw him <clears throat> interview Billie Eilish." Or I saw him interview, which is, again, I think is just a master stroke on his career doing the long form now, but talking to people who are extremely relevant right now, um, you know, like a Kim Kardashian or a Billie Eilish or a Miley yeah, Cyrus I mean, yeah, or some whatever. Are sitting out there going, so who's that interviewing Miley Cyrus? <laughs> try, try asking them if they know who Alex Bennett is. <laughs> oh, I was thinking uh, about it. How many I do people, that often, actually. How many? Years and and, and it's a surprising number of people know who you are. Of the people yeah, I ask, it's not surprising. Well, you ask. <laughs> but uh, uh, Len, how how many years ago was I in San Francisco during my show? Eight, early eighties, or eighty two, eighty. Oh no, but no, yeah, but then then eighties uh, and not. And you came back when you in the nineties. I was through in San Francisco. Yeah. So we're talking 25, 26 years. And yeah. and then uh, 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 Larry Bubbles Brown says, hey, why don't you come back to San Francisco and do a reunion show? You know, and I, okay. and I think about it and I go, you know, that's 25 years ago. How many people remember who the hell Alex? Oh, ben OK, is? perfect that you said that, because I have an exact I have a I have a rebuttal for you. The other day, I was talking to a friend of mine, and I was saying that I'd gone to see Larry Bubbles Brown, and I said, and Larry wants to do a reunion show with Alex. And he looks at me, he goes, are you fucking kidding? Of course he should do that. I would go to that in a minute. You have no yeah. idea how much I'd love to go see that. So yeah. that was and how old unsolicited. Is person, 87? He is 59, <laughs> 59 what, years old. Which, which home is, the, is your friend in? I'm sorry, which uh, one? Which which home is your friend in? <laughs> <laughs> Alex, there's no way that there are like there aren't enough people that wouldn't be excited about it that could fill a theater for one night. I think you should do it. I think it'd be an you, incredible experience. You can get a thousand people in, there you a, go. in a minute. In but a minute. There you go. And it'd be a fantastic night. Yeah. But and, of course. Yeah. Oh, look who's leaving. Look who's leaving. Right. Yeah, it's time you, to work. You know, you, to go we, you, could, your... you could get uh, you could get Laurie to come in, and we can get probably eight or ten comics, you know, and we could. It would, it would be an amazing night. <laughs> I'd want to fly down for that. That sounds amazing. Oh yeah, that sounds fantastic. Yeah. Well, you go. I'll stay here. <laughs> 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 well, yeah. No, they want me to. They'd like me to bring Laurie, you know, and they'd like to do a bunch of things. But it's a small little theater in Mill Valley called the Throckmorton. I don't know if any of you have ever. Oh, how, how many does that hold? That doesn't sound big enough. No. <laughs> well, uh, then again, I could hold it somewhere else, and there'd be too many empty seats. So you well, know, better, uh, that. yeah. You know. I I think you'd be surprised how many empty seats there wouldn't be. <laughs> yeah. Will, will yeah, you need the Secret you. Service coverage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alex, I the reason I asked I wasn't being uh, tongue in cheek when I said I asked people about you too. Like a lot of the time when I'm introducing myself or I'm being introduced to. Uh, somebody who's going to be on my show, many times they had spent a lot of time in New York. And so they ask about the origins of the show and Shecky's a big part of it. So I said, I got to know Shecky on Alex Bennett. Do you remember Alex Bennett, the radio host? And almost always it's a resounding yes. Um, so anyway, that's not for nothing, but Throck, Throck it happens Moore all the time. Throckmorton's only 320 seats. I, I no, think you that's need bigger than small. that. Yeah. You'd need yeah, I think that. that's too small. You'd be surprised how many people would come see you. 
I mean, I know six or eight just that I know, and that's just me. So yeah. Yeah, you MC a show with you know four or five comics on it or something like that, and and maybe there's a Q and A, or maybe there's one or two headline comics, and then maybe it's a Q and A with mm. you and Bubbles or with the, well, oh, part of me that great. Like take my money. Back. It's part of me that would like to go back to San Francisco and do this, and then there's part of me that doesn't. You know. Yeah. That that uh, you know that's then. This is now. You know. Yeah, you can't go back. You know. Yeah, there's. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I I hate these people who live on past laurels. Mm. Oh, uh, yeah, I used to be a big shot in San Francisco. Okay, let's go back there. We're going to kill it. You know, nah, you know, it's better to be a vacant memory to people. You know, so I don't know. I I know uh, Len would love to see it, and a lot of people would love to see it, and Pauline would fly out to see it, wouldn't you, Pauline? Me? <laughs> yeah. I had the opposite experience with you because. Um, I was uh, uh, um, I was introduced to you by by Marjorie and I uh, um, that your your fame was news to me. <laughs> I don't mean that. I don't mean any disrespect, but you know, like and, that's and, right. and I have been totally delighted along the way to hear. You know something? Story. When I met Marjorie, my fame had eluded her. <laughs> I believe that. I don't know. Maybe it's because she didn't, know, she didn't know who I was. I was this guy on J date. You know, exactly. and, <laughs> and I My said, what I, oh, and you, I slowly revealed to her what I did for a living, and that I worked over at Sirius XM at that point, and uh, that I used to be a big shot in San Francisco. Right? <laughs> slowly has found out all this stuff about me. But she did not. She did. She was about on the same level with you, and knowing uh -huh. who was, you know. So and that, it, that's it's, what it, I it's appreciate. Been, it's, it's been a very pleasant uh, um, experience for me. I always like to go out with women who didn't know who the hell I was, <laughs> you know, because then I thought I found that the relationship that was created was genuine rather than artificial. Well, sure. You know, if they know who you are. And you, they're going out with you because you're Alex Bennett. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it doesn't have much um, much value. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but oh, there she's leaving now. We're going to follow her out to the car. <laughs> <laughs> she's taking her giant Slurpee with her, or whatever <laughs> that is. Someone play the walking music. Stay hydrated. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I know it's so distracting. I should just hang up. We're going to play the Benny Hill. We're going to play the Benny Hill theme while you walk. We, we, we love going to work with you. You know, yeah. I'll just hang up because, like I said, I know it's so distracting. So I'll see you later. Oh, um, no, you, you don't have we're to. We're going to get to okay. see you in the car. All right, goodbye. No, it's like, yeah, just too distracting. It was nice uh, seeing y'all though. Okay, it's nice seeing. Bye, you. Mandy. Bye. Have bye, a good. Mandy. Bye. Bye. That's Mandy. He is our, as I say, our Darla of the, our little gang here. Uh, although we, we, you know, we have a lot of women on this show. Yeah. 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 With, with, we with started her, off with yeah. women. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I like about the show. It's evenly scattered out uh, along the, with the guys and so on. Uh, so anyway, you know, um, so um, my only, my other question is, uh, who do you think is going to win the election? And forget your prejudices. Kamala's way ahead. Huh? In the, in, in the back poll, she's way ahead. There's she's she's going to turn red states blue in some cases. If you look if you look at the data from the the focus group polling that's happening with with the un uncaptured voters in the other polls. Yeah. From your mouth to God's ear. Yeah, yeah. I was, as an atheist, I, I take offense to it. Going, I was going to say this the other night when I was on Alex Bennett's ramble, and uh, okay, it's a Joe Rogan bit, but here's the thing about that: these are people who are willing to answer polls, yeah. yep. and I think that that is a very, very. It's it, it, he makes jokes out of it and all that stuff, but it is very true. I do not answer polls ever, and a lot of people don't. I, I hope you're right. Like I really, really, really hope you're right, but my gut tells because me if, if it's we're, extremely if we're wrong, close. We're invading Canada, you know that. Don't well, you? I mean, yes. it didn't the first time, but I just remember. <laughs> remember when he got elected the first time, and like Chappelle hosted SNL the week after, and it was just this 
thunderclap of shock that everybody was feeling. Yeah. I certainly hope you guys don't have to feel that again. That was uh, we won't. But oh, <laughs> there are a lot of people saying we won't before the first time. I just I, I remember, hope you're right. Here, here's my remembrance of that night. The election is called for Trump. Okay, so I'm going into the bedroom. And Marjorie wakes up and she looks at me and she says, so how's it going? And I said, Trump won. What was your reaction, Marjorie? I don't remember. <laughs> your reaction was, oh, my God, really? You know, I mean, you were so stunned. It was ridiculous. You we know, all were. We, we all, all were. were. But yeah. there's, there's so many anti-Trump Republicans. There's so many young people who've registered to vote that I'm if, just worried about. The yeah, that's probably problem. that. There's, that there's so of... many, so many who see that Project 2025 as the beginning of, of a true fascist uh, autocracy. Yeah. And there's the, the research. Some of the interesting research I was reading was polling the wives of MAGA men who have, are going to lie to their husbands about who they're voting to. Uh, voting uh, for. Uh, uh, well, it's I'll, there's there's so I'll, many I'll, factors that all add up. Yeah, but I'll tell you what I what I think about this whole thing with polling is that, you know, polling is a guy with a uh, clipboard who comes up to you and says, you know, who are you going to vote for? OK, boom. Thank you very much. Who are you going to vote for? Boom. And that's easy. That's easier than voting. Sure. OK. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and those people are now going to have to, on voting day, sit there and say, Do I really want to go down to the poll and vote for that asshole. You know, I mean, they're they're for Trump and they'll tell a pollster they're for Trump. But will they get off their asses to go vote for him? And you know what? I, I, I heard something that, uh, kind of interesting, which is that uh, um, people that um, were exposed to um, a, a lot of information and the information uh, led to them changing their allegiance away from Trump. And then they were polled a month later. And they went back to Trump. And the, the opinion of the person who conducted the polls was that it was social pressure. Mm. Mm -hmm. I thought it was pretty interesting. Yeah. Well, there's no social pressure also, when the curtain's pulled. Yeah, when the court, curtain's pulled, there's no social pressure. Yeah. And when you come out, yeah. you can say to everybody, oh, I voted for Trump. But yeah. to me, that's the argument for people who silently vote for Trump who don't want to admit it. And mm -hmm. that's an X factor that, I mean, we're not going to find out until November what that X factor truly, truly is. Yeah. But in the last election, that from everything that I read, seems that like that was the, the deciding factor. Well, based on the rhetoric from his side now ramping up more that the rig and the fix is in rather than you should vote for me tells mm -hmm. me that they see the same information that I'm seeing. Uh... Yeah. That, that, you know, we know we're going to lose, so we got to start this. You know, his his training, the Roy Cohn training is no matter what, declare victory. Mm -hmm. if all your teeth are knocked out. You're, you're the, the, the the knight from the Monty Python. Oh, it's just a flesh wound. I won. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it could be. I, I, so, well, I think, you know, Marjorie keeps saying she's got to win, but she's got to win by a lot. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think we're going to see an Obama style win based on what's going on in some of the purplish and, and states. He's she's in play in Florida. She's in play here in Ohio. Uh, you within think the margin, within the margin of error, if you drive around in here, here I'm in Cuyahoga County, which is Cleveland, and it's a blue. So you, during the Trump wins, you'd see 50 50 in the in the banners in the yards in my county. You don't see one Trump for every 20. Harris banner that's oh, up. Wow. And then you go out in the counties around Yaga County, which is typically where, red. Where, where are it's you? 50, it's 50 50 Paula? In, the, in the country. Paula, who I mistakenly called Pauline back earlier. <laughs> uh, Paula, well, your name is Pauline now, okay? Uh, no. no. Yes. <laughs> Paula, I'm sorry about that. Paula, uh, where are you in Ohio? You're she's, in. She's over there. I'm, a, I'm in Akron. It's, it's like. Um, it's it's basically kind of it's a, it's a small city mm -hmm. and it's it's something of a of a um a a, a college town. Is it, and, is um, it red, or, a, red or blue? It, huh? Red or blue? Um, it's a. It's blue. It's, uh, it's blue, it's, but okay. but very close by in, in the suburbs. And actually, I can see it from you know from from. The street uh, and uh, across the street from me, there's there's some people 
who have enormous Trump signs, which are which annoy me whenever I go down the street. So uh, uh, there are a lot of Trump signs around. Can you see? Can you see Alaska from your house, Paula? <laughs> 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 well, also, I don't know if there's a Democrat worth his 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 salt who would put up a big giant, you know, uh, pale. No. you know, <laughs> they, we're just not flag people. You know, I, I would never advertise who I'm voting for. Hmm. See, that's me, too. That's exactly me. Again, it yeah. goes back to people who are willing to answer polls. I don't post a thing on Facebook or whatever, you know, nothing. That's the X factor. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 the, the pollsters would like to think they can be right, but they're scared uh, all yeah. out of their minds that they're going to be wrong again. You yeah. Know? yeah. 16, they were, they were given their lunch. They were completely yeah. then, handed then, their lunch. And then I, I also watch MSNBC and they're going like, uh, well, you know, she's not doing well among Latinos. And they paint this negative picture Mm -hmm. Hoping you will keep watching MSNBC yeah. to see the picture get better. And I hate this going. I hate that Steve Kornacki, that little piece of crap. <laughs> oh, I like him. Huh? I love him. You love Somebody him? Somebody should buy him a new pair yeah. of pants. Yeah. <laughs> I don't watch that stuff at all anymore. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I don't like Steve Kornacki, but what is it you like about Steve Kornacki? I love how into it he is. Like, he doesn't even know he's on television. He's just, he just goes with it. He's just such a data nerd, and it's just fun to watch. <laughs> you think he's just a data nerd? I think he's, like, really playing the game now. He's rolling the sleeves up, you know, and he's got the, you know, he never wears a jacket. Come on, dress for the thing, will you? You know. There's there's also data on a new sort of audience that they're looking at out of the polls of people who would never vote for him because they're just exhausted. Even if they agree with him, they want him gone because they just want to get back to normal. He's a, he's a terrible representation or statesman uh, well, representation for the country. Well, I think an exhaustion factor that gets in there. I think there's a Trump overkill, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. and and. Uh, he just keeps getting more ridiculous and more ridiculous with his statements as you go. Yeah, if you if you have a hydrogen car, you're going to be blown up, and no one will know who you are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was the latest stupid. Yeah, which... I mean it's 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 weird. It's very weird. Well, anyway, uh, it's the, time. Yeah, it's it's a it's a national a natural. Uh, uh, Human pet trick. I don't know. It's a <laughs> uh, it's a national uh, stupidity that has fallen amongst these people. I love watching people at a Trump rally. Occasionally, people will go in and interview them, and they are so dumb. Mm -hmm. you know, I imagine there are smart Trump voters, but the the ones that go to these rallies are just. They have no idea of what's going on in the world. Absolutely no idea. I have friends that espouse Trump all the time on Facebook, and they're very smart, very nice people. And I just, I just cannot believe that they've drank that Kool Aid and they're. No, I'm, I'm, I have my friend Phil here today. He's a nice guy, you know. He's a yeah. nice guy, but he is a Trumper all the way. Always has yeah. been. I don't know yeah. if he just does it to annoy me. Yes. <laughs> Hey, listen, we've run out of time, damn it. And, and uh, uh, yes, we did talk about politics a little bit, but I was just polling people to see well, how. You felt. know, a national election, we get to do that a little. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, you know, it, we weren't really talking about Trump versus uh, uh, Harris on mm -hmm. this and that and the other thing and the issues. Uh, but we were basically talking about what are, what are the factors that are going to either have her win or have him him lose. And I don't know that he can win this one. I think people are just tired of him. And yeah. plus, gosh, he looks old, doesn't he? Yeah. You get just, out there, yeah. she's happy, and she's making... Uh, uh... By the way, anybody watch Saturday Night Live this week? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Maya Rudolph is perfect. <laughs> I couldn't believe you, you shut your eyes. You think, you just think it's Kamala talking. And well, I mean, no, but just voice, she yeah. was doing the fingers up in the air and the yeah, whole yeah. thing. She had mm -hmm. it down. The Perfect. voice was amazing. Without, without making you feel she was doing an impression. Right. Yeah. No? I also thought and, the the the, the um, um, Biden thing was funny. 
with Dana. Oh, it was so good to see Carly. Dana back. Oh, that made, yeah. that made my heart smile. I mean, yeah. yes. he's now got another president under right, since Bush, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. uh, and and I Bubbles should be happy for that because it's he, he always is the opening act for Dana Carvey. So that's yeah, uh, that's right. Uh, but uh, yeah, but uh, how about how about Jim Gaffigan? He yeah, was yeah, yeah. yeah. Was the, um, my god, oh, that was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, was, it was pretty much that whole thing was. <laughs> One of the best things they've done in a long time. Yeah. But uh, anyway, the gag, hold on, the gag where where Trump had the bulletproof shield in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> and then when he left and uh, it was the vice, it was the, who's Vance, his running Vance. 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 And Vance comes out and they take the bulletproof shield away. <laughs> I laughed out loud. That was fun. Perfect. Right. A little great little bit there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just I I just think it's marvelous and I think that uh but you know what I hate though again uh, we'll run over to hell with it. Yeah. You know, right. Let them have to have to watch a 2 hour show. Yeah. <laughs> I think Andrew had a meeting. See you, Andrew. You yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure yeah. Andrew had some kind of meeting. Either that or he doesn't love me anymore. I mean, yeah. But no, uh what I was going to say what was I going to say? I was going to say that uh, uh SNL uh, SNL, uh, well, they haven't been funny in years. You know? They killed uh, it last week. In fact, I love that, that line, what's her name, the host had, where she said, I first watched SNL and thought it was called Saturday Night Laughs, and then I watched it and realized I was wrong. <laughs> 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 but, uh, you know, I mean, oh, I was going to say, all these late-night talk show hosts do impressions of yeah. Uh, Kimmel doesn't do an impression of Trump, and good for him, all right? But uh, Colbert does one, and Seth Meyers does one, and Fallon does one. They all do terrible Trump yep. impressions. Mm -hmm. yep. They're all terrible. Stop doing them. They're not funny. <laughs> they don't work. Mm -hmm. yeah. They uh, lost Alec Baldwin. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm out of here, and so are you guys. <laughs> Thank you all, Marjorie, first of all, for being here, and Paula, thank you, and thank you to uh, Francine Witt, and thanks to uh, 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 Len LaFrisco and uh, 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 Jeffrey Stein and Charlene Solis and uh, Charlie Wallace and Mike mm -hmm. Chisholm and Mandy was here, and who else was here? Uh, mm -hmm. and Andrew, Andrew Deutsch. Andrew yeah. Deutsch. Uh, was there anybody else? I, I Don guess, Giller. Oh, wait, not this week. Uh, Don, uh, Don, uh, <laughs> anyway, Don. He can still show up. <laughs> and he, he'll call five minutes after I'm yeah, He can still show up. <laughs> yeah. anyway, uh, thank you all. And and uh, saying good night for all of us to sign us off, as usual, is Edward Berger, who says, That's all, folks. <laughs> I left the last for two weeks. Yeah, have a good trip. Oh, okay. okay. Have fun. Bye -bye. All right, everybody. Bye, guys. See you later. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.